Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to make small home-based photography studio work for you. Ksenia Pro, I'm a fashion and portrait photographer based out of Washington DC and I have a home-based studio here downstairs in my house. So what I love about my studio is that first I have daylight because this is what I was looking for when I originally bought the house. I was actually specifically looking for the space for my studio um, but the room itself is not very big. It's actually just a little bit over 200 square foot and the longest side is 14.5 uh, feet. The next thing that I love about my studio is that it has direct access from the outside, meaning that people don't have to go upstairs and see my living space. So uh, when I have clients coming in, they stay downstairs and my family can still be in the house when I shoot. So this is the main reason for me why I chose this house when I bought it with the studio in mind. Now the downside is the size of the room because this is just the size of a small bonus room downstairs which is supposed to be an office but I'm using it for my photography studio and making it work. Uh, now I'm booking at least three to four studio shoots a week here in the space during the winter months. So if you have some kind of bonus room that you can convert to the studio please don't hesitate because I waited for two years to start bringing clients in and feel comfortable in the small space in my home base studio. I thought I would need it like a big commercial studio to actually bring clients in. The truth is nobody cares. As long as it's good enough and they're getting excellent quality pictures, that's all they care about. Oh my gosh, you've made me look so pretty. Thank you so much. <laughs> so let's dive in into the video and see how it all works. So let's start with the layout. When my clients come in, they arrive either from the garage in the back of the house so they can park there and walk through the garage and come in here or they can walk through the front door. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, the other thing that I love about my layout is that I have uh, a powder room here so they can change there, they can fix their hair and makeup. I also put like a full size mirror in the hallway so they can see, they can check the outfit. In the studio itself, I have three windows. So the side that's right behind me right now, I'm using it either as a background or as a light source. So it works both ways. So as you see, I put those sheer see-through curtains on the windows just to filter the daylight so it gets really soft and nice during the day. So originally I had very nice blinds that came with the house from the previous owner, but I had to take them down on those two windows because they were getting in the way, they were looking too destructive when I was using this wall as a background for my pictures. And the truth is I don't really get a lot of direct sunlight from that side, but I get a lot of direct sunlight in the morning from this window. So what I do usually, I kept the blinds there, I still cover them with the curtains. Um, but if I get the direct sunlight, I just open or close uh, the blinds as I need to. If there is um, overcast or there is no direct sunlight through that window, I just put them all up so I get as much light as possible. So when you work in a small studio space, it's essential to plan ahead of time. So if you have a client coming in, talk ahead of time. What are you supposed to do? What kind of setup are you going to get ready for them? because I don't want to be changing multiple backdrops in a small studio space and having people move all the way all the time. What I do is I build the setup for the specific shoot and I store the rest of the things either in the garage or I have like an extra storage downstairs here. Don't be worried if you need to move things around as you go because I'm, I'm often just like pushing all the furniture, all the props to one corner of the room that's not showing in the pictures and using it just the other side to shoot so it looks nice and clean in the shot. A lot of people when they come in, they're like, oh wow, I thought your studio was so much bigger because of the way it looks in the photos. 
So you know how in real estate photography they make the house look so nice and big and you come in and it actually looks kind of small? So this is the same principle most of you probably already know. So if you use a wide angle lens, you make the space look bigger. But there's other tricks that you can use. So I don't necessarily shoot at 24 millimeters all the time. But if I need a nice wide shot with lots of negative space around the subject, for example, one of those uh, maternity pictures that I do with flowy fabric, we have to have a lot of room to make the room look bigger because the dress is so gigantic. So what I do, I actually back myself up all the way up against the opposite wall. I put the, um, my 24 to 70 at 24 millimeters on a full frame. I use Canon 5D Mark IV most of the time. Um, and this opens up the shot and makes the space look so much bigger. Another good trick to make the studio look bigger is to keep it clean, meaning don't overcrowd it with props and additional furniture pieces and keep the colors clean, basic, so it looks nice and airy in the pictures. So for example, my studio is all white. I specifically changed the hardwood floors into the light, ashy white color to open up the space. The walls were already kind of off-white-ish, so I didn't change that when I bought the house. And most of my furniture that I use as props is either light or clear color. The other trick that helps to open up the space is actually the curtains, the window treatments that I did. They make the windows look taller and bigger. Uh, and in the pictures, sometimes in post-production and Photoshop, I actually extend the frame, I extend the walls and the ceiling, um, so it looks actually taller than it is, and I, may, I make it look wider sometimes as well. So that's the main trick that I use that actually makes my studio look so much bigger. And then last but not least, how to make it work if you don't want to shoot just with the daylight or just with one setup. So I actually use the backdrop system, I use the studio lights, the strobes, I use continuous lights sometimes for my shoots. So it really depends on the specific session that I'm getting ready for. But basically I use the opposite wall, which is just the plain wall, to set up the backdrop. I either tape it to the wall that saves space because you don't uh, lose those inches for the stands for the backdrop. Or I just use the backdrop system to hold the um, uh, larger backdrops. And again, it's all about positioning yourself, positioning your lights. Obviously, it's a bit limiting, so I can do a lot of high production shoots here, but it still looks very nice. And I'm so happy that I can use my home-based small studio for my portrait work, for my beauty, and sometimes even for my fashion work. So if you don't have a big commercial studio space, don't let it stop you from creating beautiful photos. Because I've actually worked out of my apartment for the longest time and I brought uh, models in there and some of the shoots actually did one full-scale lookbook fashion photo shoot in my apartment and it turned out nicely. So it's not about having a beautiful space, it's about making what you have work. So question of the day for you, where do you shoot now if you have to do a studio shoot? Answer in the comment below. So see what kind of space you have in your house, in your apartment. See if you need to make some small changes, like I had to change um, carpet to hardwood, I had to put the curtains up. But honestly, those changes were so minor and so easy to do. So now I'm kind of beating myself up why I was waiting so long to do that. People actually love my studio look on my Instagram page and they come and request that look now. I think mainly because of the floor color. I love it, it looks so pretty. Alright guys, hopefully this video was useful to you. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell button. See you in the next one. Bye!